Things are changing rapidly as the Omicron variant spreads throughout Manitoba. Just a few days after the previous health orders were released, Premier Heather Stephenson and Dr. Brent Rusin take the podium again to announce additional restrictions being put into place. This is a move that was widely expected as we have been seeing record numbers of cases in the province almost daily this week. Today, December 29th, saw 947 new cases of COVID-19 in Manitoba, with a provincial five-day test positivity rate of an unprecedented 24.2%. We take you now to Premier Stephenson and Dr. Rusin for a fuller picture of the new health orders and the state of the province. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you uh, for, for all of you for joining us here today. I want to thank Dr. Rusin uh, for being here, and, and thank you uh, for and your team for giving up your holidays to keep Manitobans informed as we learn more about uh, the newest COVID-19 variant, uh, Omicron, and its impacts on our communities and on our health care system. As with many jurisdictions in Canada and to the south of us, case counts are rising rapidly and we must do everything we can to ensure our health care system can continue to offer patients the care they need when they need it. As those case counts continue to rise, so does the demand for testing at sites across the province. As a government, we continue to explore options to increase our capacity and alleviate wait times for those seeking a test. Starting today, take home self-administered rapid tests will be available at provincial, uh, at provincial testing sites, as well as at other locations to help protect vulnerable Manitobans. When an individual visits a testing site, the type of test they receive will now be based on their vaccination status. These, these changes are being introduced incrementally and will help manage current and growing demand for COVID-19 tests. Additionally, rapid test kits will soon be available at Manitoba Family, family Services offices, uh, through Child and Family Services agencies, as well as Community Living and Disability Services clients living independently. Manitobans are seeking a COVID-19 test for out-of-province uh, travel purposes should not attend provincial testing sites. Rather, they should seek out a private provider. Our number one priority is to protect the health and well-being of all Manitobans. We continue to have some of the most stringent public health measures in the country to minimize the spread of this virus and protect our most vulnerable. I want to thank Manitobans who altered or cancelled their Christmas plans to help minimize the spread of this highly contagious virus. Now as we approach the new year, a time that is usually filled with celebration, we are once again urging Manitobans to limit your close contacts at this crucial time in our fight against COVID-19. And so today we are here to announce additional measures to limit gathering sizes in all public places to help mitigate community transmission and to protect our hospitals and the people who need them most. With that, I'll pass it over to Dr. Rusin to expand on the new public health orders. Dr. Thank Rusin. You. Thank you, Premier. Uh, good afternoon. I'm uh, Brent Rusin, Manitoba's Chief Provincial Public Health Officer. Uh, as we forecasted last week, we're seeing increased uh, daily COVID-19 numbers. Uh, since Friday, we've uh, reported uh, 2,154 positive cases. Um, these increased case counts means we are seeing an increase in demand for testing, and that increase in demand is uh, resulting in increased wait times, both to receive the test, but also to receive the test results. And so as that demand has uh, increased, we've also seen now this backlog of tests. Uh, so we are certainly under-reporting the, the number of uh, positives that we um, uh, that are circulating. Uh, we know that Omicron is, is here in Manitoba and circulating quite widely at this point. 
Um, we've seen a dramatic increase in our test positivity, and I wanted to address that uh, a, a little bit. Um, we see 19% provincially and 21% and in Winnipeg. Um, so certainly our numbers are increasing, and we, and we have a significant amount of transmission, as we see in our daily test numbers. The um, uh, the test positivity has been uh, a change the way we can interpret that because of uh, how we're deploying our rapid tests. So many people are getting the rapid test to test at home and only those testing positive are returning for PCR tests. Therefore, we're, we're skewing to a to a higher test positivity. Uh, so uh, this is just one of the indicators we look at. It's now changed the way we interpret that number, but it is just one thing we interpret. Um, but we also know at the same time we are seeing a dramatic increase in, in test positivity and uh, cases at this, uh, at this point. Uh, so we do expect that test positivity rate to be um, as high as it is, and we'll continue to look at all um, other indicators as well. Uh, so we know that in the Winnipeg region, uh, of the test positives, where we're seeing the majority of test positives right now, uh, roughly 75% uh, of those uh, uh, test positives are Omicron. Uh, so we see that that Omicron is here, especially in, in Winnipeg. Uh, so again, it's taken over as our most prominent strain in almost all regions. Uh, and um, so uh, at this point, we're not going to continue to provide uh, Omicron case data. Uh, we know that the vast majority of cases are Omicron, and that number is just going to continue to increase over, uh, over time. Uh, so the vast majority of people who screen positive will... Uh, be screening positive for Omicron as well. And so we know Omicron is highly transmissible. Um, it's difficult to predict the uh, exact impact Omicron will have on our uh, healthcare system, um, but we know we, we need to be prepared for that. Uh, we know we can't um, rely on some of the reports of Omicron being uh, less severe. We know with the amount of transmission we're seeing, we're going to see that dem demand translating into uh, increased demand on the healthcare system. Um, so again, we need to protect that healthcare system uh, for everyone who needs it, all Manitobans who need it, which means we need to decrease the amount of transmission that's occurring with, uh, with Omicron. So we already have orders in place that reduce uh, capacity for private gatherings. Those have been in place uh, uh, for quite some time now in Manitoba. Uh, we're introducing new public health orders that affect uh, the size of gatherings in public places. Uh, so effective tomorrow, we're reducing gathering sizes in public places for, for groups of vaccinated people. Uh, so gatherings um, much, uh, must not exceed 50% capacity um, of the usual capacity of space. Um, or now capped at 250 uh, persons, whichever is less. So these uh, capacity restrictions will affect restaurants, licensed premises, food courts, socials, movie theaters, concert halls, performing arts venues, um, outdoor ticketed performing arts events, museums, art galleries, outdoor and indoor sporting and recreational facilities, including dance studios and martial arts studios, uh, gyms, fitness centers, and yoga studios, um, indoor and outdoor ticketed sporting events, indoor recreational businesses, um, seasonal facilities and events, uh, religious services uh, and indigenous cultural events, bingos, casinos, businesses, and VLTs. Uh, so these uh, restrictions place capacity limits at these locations, including gatherings where uh, all attendees are fully vaccinated um, or, or under the age of, of 12. So again, I want to reiterate here that the, this whole purpose of having capacity restrictions and, uh, and reducing capacity size is to ensure there's distancing between clients. So we've heard of uh, reports of uh, different businesses where the, the overall capacity of their building is at 50, but they're cramming everyone into a single room. Uh, this is not the intent of the orders. That's putting those people, your customers, at risk of transmission. The 50% and the cap is there to ensure the distancing between clients. So please um, understand the intent of the orders. Please do what you can to protect uh, your patrons as well as, uh, as all Manitobans. Um, so we're also introducing restrictions to curtail liquor sales at restaurants and licensed premises at 10 p.m. each day. Uh, we know these uh, will change uh, the plans of many uh, individuals and, uh, and businesses. Um, but we're putting them in place now 
um, in face of Omicron and widespread transmission to try to limit that transmission. Um, so we know hundreds of thousands of Manitobans have been vaccinated and continue to follow the public health orders. And, and I thank you for that. All Manitobans thank you for that. Uh, but these changes are necessary right now to reduce that risk um, of uh, uh, overwhelming the healthcare system. Uh, so again, we need Manitobans to limit contacts with others and together with immediate family, really reduce those, uh, those plans. These orders have, um, have now uh, required the reduction in a lot of gatherings that were planned to take place. Um, and we know that's, uh, that's difficult, especially this time of year, especially the second year in a row. Uh, but we all need to do our parts to reduce the amount of trans uh, transmission by reducing the amount of contacts we have. So follow those fundamentals, stay home when you're sick, go for testing and isolate until you get your test results. So again, um, we know it's challenging times. We know there's a long wait to get tested. There's a backlog, so people are waiting longer for their test results. But uh, a significant proportion of our test positives, we can't get a hold of. Uh, so we're, we're, you know, we're phoning people who are ill, who came for testing, tested positive, but no one's at home. Uh, and so it's, uh, I understand it's, it's a difficult time, but if you were ill and needed to get testing, you need to isolate until you get your results. Um, and we're finding a significant proportion of people went and got tested, but are out and about. So we really need to uh, rely on Manitoba and stay home if you're, if you're sick. Um, so again, wear a mask, wash your hands, uh, protect yourself and those around you by getting fully vaccinated. Get whatever dose you're immediately eligible for, whether that's your first, second or third. Uh, we've talked about those capacity issues uh, at the uh, testing sites. So again, uh, uh, younger, healthy uh, individuals, those under 40, no underlying health conditions. Um, if you're ill, uh, you could consider just isolating for 10 days at home. Um, you could still attend a health, uh, the, the testing site, get a rapid test and, and, and see what that shows. But either way, if you're ill, we need you to self-isolate until you get a test result. If you're not going to get a test result, it's for 10 days. Um, and that's going to help preserve some of that testing capacity for those that are um, uh, at risk of more serious outcomes. Uh, so appointments uh, for tests are available at some locations, as well as drive through walk-in, walk-up. Uh, check those uh, locations and hours before you go, because uh, during these th these times, sometimes there's, there's changes. Um, when you go for testing, um, you can expect uh, some of the uh, longer lineups, although the uh, strategy now with the rapid testing has uh, has uh, significantly improved that. Um, and that cur the current test turnaround uh, can be up to four days or even longer. So again, if you're symptomatic, we need you isolating for that 10 days or until you get a negative, uh, negative result. Um, not what anyone wanted to hear this time, uh, time of year, and again, the second year uh, in, in a row, uh, but it's what we need to do. So I want to ask Manitobans to be patient as we work on ways to further alleviate those delays uh, and uh, be kind to others. Uh, every, uh, people in line are, are going through the same thing you're going through, all Manitobans are, so let's be kind to each other, let's uh, make it through this like we have before. Um, Manitobans who are seeking COVID tests for travel purposes, please do not go to our testing locations where we need this for Manitobans who are ill. Uh, go to private providers if you need this for, test, uh, for travel purposes. Um, we didn't want to celebrate another holiday this way, but we've got to keep each other safe. We have to uh, protect that healthcare system. So please be safe, please be kind, and um, uh, thanks again. I'm going I'm to pass it back to the Premier now. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rusin. And we recognize um, that this news will be disappointing to many t Manitobans as we round out the holiday season. Uh, but we, we must act now to protect our health care system and ensure Manitobans can access the care they need when they need it. We all have a role to play and I'm confident that the actions we take now will help ensure a healthier year ahead. Vaccines work. And now more than ever with a new variant circulating throughout Manitoba, it is critical that all Manitobans get fully vaccinated, including a third dose when you're eligible. Just a reminder to follow the fundamentals, stay home when you're sick, get tested, wear a mask, socially distance and limit your close contacts. We can and we will get through this together. 
thank you, and uh, we're now ready to take any questions reporters may have. Uh, so you're announcing restrictions here to public places, yes, and but why, why not the private uh, you know, places? Yeah, I know there are place, uh, restrictions in place for private, but I mean, we're, we're announcing 2150, roughly on 2150 uh, cases here in Manitoba over the past couple of days. I mean, we've seen these numbers in this province since the pandemic. Yeah, and, um, you know, with New Year's Eve coming up, why not implement more restrictions to the private? Because people are still going to get together. A recommendation is not going to not going to really change people's plans from getting together for New Year's Eve, so why not just limit to two family only and, and households? Why keep that private option open? So, like you said, we, we already have restrictions in place, and, and they're in line with most other jurisdictions in, in Canada. Um, so, uh, you know, so a fully vaccinated crowd uh, could have household plus 10. We, you, like you say, we do message. We want to limit that as much as possible. Um, unvaccinated uh, uh, crowd, um, you know, only five plus household, which is amongst uh, some of the most strict in, in the nation right now. So, so we do have measures on there. Uh, messaging is, uh, is always important. We know it's, it's very difficult to... Uh, to enforce these type of uh, orders in, in um, private residence. So I think the messaging is really important. And, and so we are uh, getting that message out. And, and, uh, but we do have pretty strong orders in place as well. What's the, what's the projected impact on case counts given you know, a 50% reduction across the board or 250 people? Yeah, and so, I mean, uh, these are always hard things to, to model because there's so many variables in, in place when we throw it in a model. Uh, most of the, the models that we've seen from other areas that a 50% that a reduction in, in contacts is a, is a very significant impact on the number of cases we see, which would translate in a significant reduction of, um, um, uh, you know, uh, of that strain in the healthcare system. So what, uh, you know, the actual impact and reduction of contacts is with any specific order, that's, uh, that's difficult to comment on. Yeah, I know retail. Yeah, and so retail has always had uh, restrictions in place. Uh, we wanted to remind uh, uh, Manitobans and and our retail partners that those uh, those restrictions are in place. That uh, they are required to have that two meter separation between uh, uh, patrons, which is uh, quite a significant capacity limitation, and 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 that can be enforced and will be enforced. Uh, again, the the nature of the contact within retail is different in a lot of these settings. Um, the transient nature of, of walking by people is is uh, less significant, uh, but be that as it may, we, we do have pretty significant restrictions. Premier, have you started discussions with any other provincial? your provincial counterparts or Ottawa about ICU resources because of the case, the case counts that we're seeing now, um, that's uh, if the rate of ICU admission continues, it's going to be nine admissions a day in, in about 10 days time. And that's not, um, we can't do that locally. So how are we preparing for that? Yeah, certainly we know that other jurisdictions are, uh, you know, are facing this as well. And so we obviously are working together to see how we can share and what best pa practices are. Um, as Dr. Rusin has already stated, we have among the most uh, stringent uh, restrictions in place already across uh, across in, in Manitoba um, relative to across the country. And so when it comes to our, our ICU capacity, we have been um, we have been training more nurses. A total of 147 new nurses have completed uh, the two-week general ICU nursing program. Uh, in the last 10 months, as well as 70 nurses have completed uh, the 12-week critical care program as well in the last uh, several months. And so we are increasing the, the nursing capacity within the system. Uh, we are also looking at our internationally educated nurses as well um, and looking uh, to triage those to see how we can get them trained and, and uh, working um, on the, the front lines. And, uh, you know, those are some of the measures that we are taking. Uh, I have had discussions with uh, the Prime Minister um, and our counterparts across the country. Um, and I know that the Minister of Health has also uh, been in touch federally as well. And we have received, uh, I believe it's eight uh, nurses, or they will be sending um, eight nurses uh, uh, to Manitoba to help out uh, in the ICU. So considerable work has been done over the last several months to prepare for this. And, uh, but we will continue to obviously work um, with shared health and, and work across the system to see how we can make those improvements so that we have a healthcare system that's there for Manitobans when they need it. 
like nothing additional uh, to the eight ICU nurses that have been uh, committed to, Mass to Manitoba. Well, from, from the federal government, yes, that is the case, and I know those discussions are ongoing. And uh, the Minister of Health has been um, has been dis in discussions uh, with respect to to uh, more help from the federal government. Uh, but again, it doesn't mean that we stop what we need to do here, and we have been doing and taking those um, those steps here to adequately prepare um, uh, for for this. And do you think there will be a decoupling of cases, or do you expect that ICU admission rate to hold with Omicron? You know, right now we're, we're seeing some, some reports from other jurisdictions that uh, uh, severity uh, may be less with, with Omicron. Uh, what we're saying right now is we can't rely on that. Uh, so we need to be cautious right now. If that um, does uh, hold true, th then certainly um, that's going to be uh, uh, quite helpful uh, in our in our jurisdiction. But we can't rely on that. We're, we need to do what we can to bring down the transmission right now. I understand uh, in Great Britain there are millions of cases of Omicron and comparatively few um, hospitalizations compared to the Delta. Um, do you think that could possibly play out here? Well, we're we're still learning, and so uh, those jurisdictions like UK are uh, you know a couple weeks uh, ahead of us. So we're going to be able to get uh, get some insight in the coming weeks about that. Uh, so uh, again, we can't rely on that um, because uh, you know given the. Um, severe trajectory of case uh, total case counts we can see here even a dramatic decrease in severity could still put quite a strain on our healthcare system so we're not going to rely on it but we are watching that really closely and uh, and and uh, we'll allow that to guide us once we know more about it thank you a reminder to our reporters on this session you will have one preliminary and one follow-up question up first this afternoon from CJOB, Skyler. Hi there, thanks for taking our questions, guys. Uh, the liquor one, we've done this a couple of times now. What's the thought process behind, <clears throat> excuse me, behind uh, capping liquor sales at 10 p.m.? Yeah, and so this is where we've seen uh, transmission occur um, in the uh, in many of the past waves. Uh, people gathering later at night, um, more consumption of, of alcohol usually, especially coming up on the um, uh, on this holiday season where there'll be many more celebrations. We just find it's more and more difficult to stick to uh, some of the public health guidance in there and, and seen a number of outbreaks, now a lot of transmission. So we cap that at, uh, at, the, PM, uh, at the 10 p.m. Um, it's that finding that balance um, so, so we still have businesses open and able to operate, but we um, reduce some of the harms we have noticed where, uh, where and when transmission has taken place largely. Thank you for that. Um, getting some reaction uh, to the news already, and of course there are people on both sides, but a lot of people were expecting more uh, to come down from you guys today. Uh, what do you say to them if, you know, some people, yes, they can stay at home, uh, you know, when possible, but some people uh, don't have that option if they're working in public facing roles and, and they might be quite concerned uh, about their risk of contracting COVID and, and then passing it on to uh, their loved ones. Yeah, and I mean, I think that this is, uh, again, like we've always tried is to uh, to balance the, the response. Uh, so we have, um, uh, you know, limits on many of the higher risk um, activities and then remember we you know earlier this month had uh, put on very significant restrictions you know prior to the the large uptake and uh, uptick in, in uh, Omicron here so we are adding restrictions already on to a restricted province here so we have many uh, uh, many layers of protection already here from CBC Radio Canada Zoe Hello. Um, I was uh, wondering on December for uh, on December twenty fourth, uh, the province announced that there were at least ten thousand tests awaiting processing. Uh, do you have specific number on that? Yeah, right now that backlog is uh, at about eleven thousand five hundred. 
Thank you. My second question is about the self-administered uh, rapid test available in some testing sites. Uh, we know that sometimes uh, the test is negative, even if the person has COVID. Uh, so the person needs to do that test again uh, hours later. Is that kind of information released uh, for Manitobans on the website, uh, like the steps, uh, like what do you need to do if you're negative, uh, what you need to do if you're positive, and also the steps uh, to follow for, for uh, contact tracing, like your letters that people can send to uh, to their close contacts. Yeah, and so uh, so no test is is perfect. There's going to be false positive, false negative tests with any test that's administered. The rapid tests are, are no different, and so all that in <clears throat> instruction is passed out uh, to people coming. Uh, we want symptomatic people uh, attending the the test sites. They are provided with the three uh, tests uh, and instructions on uh, steps to take if they test negative or positive, um, and and then again about uh, uh, notifying contacts. From CBC Manitoba, Erin. Good afternoon, Dr. Rusin. Um, you said that these restrictions are in line with what other provinces are doing. However, we do know that Manitoba is unique because at this point, we don't have a lot of ICU capacity. Mm. There are far more nurse vacancies, and we're not doing a great job of managing the rapid testing. We're at capacity there. Now you're saying that no one's home when they're testing positive. Do you think those people who aren't home when they're positive are listening to this news conference and taking a recommendation to stay home? I spoke with lots of people yesterday who are out and about Boxing Day shopping and talking about gathering with people over the holidays, and they said orders are stronger. That sends a stronger message than recommendations. So why not stronger orders today? Well, there's a, there's a number of, of issues you brought up there, and and so with with testing and and isolating when you when you're positive. I mean, we do have orders in that regard. I I can't comment on who's listening to to the press conference, um, uh, but we do have a number of uh, you know of orders uh, out out there, and so people getting uh, testing. Uh, uh, getting tested because they have symptoms, um, but then choosing not to isolate, um, uh, that doesn't really get addressed in, uh, you know, in orders, really. It's, it's about our public health direction. Uh, so we do need Manitobans on board. We've, we've known that all along. Um, but we we have quite a, a number of restrictions, and and I know we'll we'll be seeing in the, in the next uh, later today and and tomorrow just how um, difficult these restrictions are are placing uh, uh, on on certain businesses and Mount Tobins as well. So we try to find that balance. Premier Stephenson, I also spent a lot of time at the testing sites last week and seeing so many people being turned away because the lineups were so long, seniors waiting in line uh, on foot and having to walk home to a house where there is others who, were, who would maybe also be symptomatic. Um, people are getting frustrated waiting uh, at home for the results. Now we're hearing five days. What was the explanation for waiting so long to start using these rapid tests? And what is the plan going forward to reduce some of these delays? Yeah, so good question. I mean, obviously, we, we put this uh, in place. Uh, now we did a pilot project of, um, of utilizing the rapid test so that if, if someone comes in and they've been vaccinated, but they are, they're symptomatic, they actually get a rapid test, go home. If it's positive, then they come back for a, a PCR test. And so that has reduced the, the, uh, the backlogs significantly, which is helping, obviously, to ensure that we, we get those results more quickly to Manitobans. Um, so, and there, there was, you know, a couple of supply issues uh, off, uh, like, yeah, off the bat there at the beginning as well that, that we were dealing with. And so, but I think we've, um, we rectified, you know, many of those issues now. And so we're able to move forward so that those tests are available to Manitobans. What are we doing to get them read faster? From the Canadian Press, Rob. I'm okay. My question's been answered. From CTV Winnipeg, Mason. Hi there. 
There are countless businesses, you know, restaurants, museums, retail, choosing to close because of COVID-19 concerns. Uh, does the government plan on having any other f further supports? And what message do you give business owners who are acting more proactively than your government? Thanks very much uh, for the question. Certainly, we did announce uh, last week upwards of $22 million to help those businesses that were impacted as a result of uh, of the orders put in place 10 days ago. And uh, those uh, supports will, will ap apply here as well. Uh, we will always look to ensure that those uh, businesses who are negatively impacted as a result of this will have the necessary supports in place. And so uh, we'll continue to work with uh, our, our partners in the business community to help them get through this. We want to see them get through this and be successful at the end so that we can get them back up and running and, and, and growing their businesses here in Manitoba. And that's obviously what we want to see um, moving forward. Thanks for that. And I'm not hearing any new restrictions for the unvaccinated. Why not? Aren't they the most at risk? Well, they're already significantly restricted. Uh, so any private gathering that uh, has any unvaccinated individuals uh, can only have a five in addition to a household. Uh, and then we have the proof of vaccine in many, in most public settings. Uh, and so they're they're still unable to participate in those in those settings. So um, uh, we already have quite a uh, quite a restricted province uh, in regard to the unvaccinated. From Global News, Will. And good afternoon to you both. Uh, Dr. Rusin, I see these orders are set to expire on January 11th. Of course, I'm sure they could be extended, but what are you going to be looking for specifically before you're comfortable relaxing them? So as we've been dealing with throughout, uh, you know, essentially all of this pandemic, the real concern is how this translates into the strain on the healthcare system. And so we're going to be watching that in jurisdictions that are uh, ahead of us with Omicron transmission. We're going to obviously be looking at it in our jurisdiction. Uh, and so, uh, you know, the 11th, we, we always set our uh, these type of public health orders with that expiry date to, to ensure Manitobans know we're, we're always reviewing these and we'll only have restrictions in place for as long as they're required. Um, so uh, there's a number of things we'll be looking at uh, prior to these expiring. Okay, thank you. Indications last week already were that cases were climbing. Uh, we had a press conference on Friday. Why not introduce these new orders then or, or even sooner? Well, so the, I mean, these orders right here are applying to the very large uh, gatherings. And so we knew there was uh, some, um, you know, large gatherings being planned this week. We knew there was some larger uh, sports events going to be planned early this week. So we were working to ensure that uh, uh, we weren't going to have very large, you know, gatherings with thousands of thousands of Manitobas in there. And so this is uh, where the timing led us. From the Brandon Sun. Karen. Uh, just with brewing reports that because this Omicron variant is so contagious, we're going to re have to rethink our masking and maybe go back to, say, uh, KN95 or something more aggressive. Uh, has the province considered changing the, uh, the masking recommendations? You know, overall, right now with the, the masking, uh, we suggest the, the best fitted mask that you can, can obtain. So certainly a, a medical mask, a good fitting medical mask is better than a single layer cloth mask. We want uh, people to do whatever they can to uh, um, uh, to uh, do that if possible. The KN95s, um, again, are, are not medical grade, the ones that we have been um, uh, giving out. Um, so they are uh, better, much better than those cloth masks, a single layer cloth mask. Uh, but we've uh, run into some trouble with the KN95s when people are attending a, a facility, like a medical facility where a medical grade mask is required, um, the, the KN95 is not going to qualify for that. Uh, so we're looking at the, uh, at the messaging, um, but uh, ultimately reducing our quali uh, amount, non uh, number of contacts physical distancing, hand washing, using the best uh, mask that you can have available, uh, using it properly, properly fitted as our, as our advice at this point. And just again, uh, it's pretty much been 
and talked about it at length, but of course, a lot of studies coming out saying that yeah, this variant, yes, it's highly contagious, but less less uh, less lethal. But uh, I just said again, you are taking those as very preliminary and just going ahead with uh, worrying about the strain, correct? Correct. You know, with the um, with the significant amount of numbers we're going to see, just the sheer absolute numbers of cases, uh, even a significant reduction in severity could still put a significant strain on our healthcare system. So right now we need to focus on reducing transmission. As we learn more and more, um, we'd um, obviously be quite happy to uh, to have a strain that has a dramatic reduction in severity. We just can't rely on that right now. We now return to the News Conference Theatre. Will there be widespread av availability of rapid tests at, like, for the public at any time in the coming days or weeks? Like if I could just go to a pharmacy and pick up a rapid test to take home? I think um, certainly, uh, you know, we are working through central services who's working along with the federal government who is, you know, in terms of the supply. To the extent that we can get this out, um, you know, uh, in, a, in a wider way uh, for Manitobans, we'd want to work towards that. Obviously, looking at protecting those most vulnerable uh, will start off in schools and, and whatnot as well. But, um, you know, uh, but I think to the extent that we can get more of these, we will... Um, distribute them more widely as well. Uh, what's, what's enforcement going to look like here over the next uh, couple of weeks? I know the, the, the uh, restrictions end on January 11th, so what's, what's the plan for enforcement? Well, I think we, we continue with enforcement as, as we have been. I, I know that the number of tickets that, that we gave out between October and the beginning of December um, have been, uh, you know, more than any other province across Western Canada. And uh, in particular, 70% um, of those have been given out in Southern Health. I, I think, you know, I just want to commend those uh, who are out there on, uh, like, enforcing these rules. Uh, for their time, effort, and energy during the especially during the holiday season, and for the work that they do. Why not set up like a portal or a, on the, or a phone line where people can report their rapid test result if it's positive, rather than having them come back and wait in line for a PCR test, you know, again. Yeah, and so these are things that we are uh, actively looking at right now. We we. Um, had a dramatic increase in the demand at the site, so we moved quickly for with this uh, this plan, and so things like that we are uh, we are looking at as well. Okay, how is that something that, that could be done in short order? I'm just wondering, like for for somebody who's sick and at home with a positive test result, they're not going to be feeling so good to go get a, a PCR test again. Yeah, well, I, I'm not sure on the logistics of how quickly something like that can be turned around, but it is something that's uh, being looked at. With ICU, and I want to go back to ICU admissions because this is, of course, the, you know, the limiting factor and so many things that we, like, that the pandemic touches on. So how confident, like, with nine, with the possibility of having nine ICU admissions a day for COVID alone in the coming weeks, that's going to, that's triple what we've done in the past. I, I don't know how this is going to... Um, are you not as concerned or is this not as urgent of a situation as it sounds? Um. Well, we, we've now um, uh, introduced and, and expanded orders twice, uh, you know, since Omicron being in, in Manitoba. So we definitely th feel it's, it's urgent. Uh, and so we've may, uh, took uh, measures twice now and we'll continue to watch it uh, and, uh, and do what we need to move forward. Uh, the healthcare system um, is, is working on their end at trying to increase capacity. And, uh, you know, those numbers, we're, we're watching other jurisdictions to see exactly what, uh, what type of ICU demands they're, they're starting to see with, with their increased numbers. So uh, definitely uh, it's, um, it's urgent and concerning to us, and we've taken steps now twice to try to reduce transmission. Just to go back to enforcement, when someone gets a ticket, how many people have actually paid the ticket? Do you guys have numbers on that? Oh. I don't have numbers on those uh, today, but we can certainly look into that through the Department of Justice. Bruce, what happens to healthcare workers who okay. test positive for this variant? Or do they take time off? Can they keep working? Is the system in danger of losing a bunch of people? So this is the other the other impact on on say the healthcare system, but on a lot of critical services when we have widespread uh, transmission, is that yes we will have uh, severe outcomes which put strain, but then we'll also see people working in in critical um, 
uh, uh, jobs uh, that uh, they might be out um, having to isolate even if they have mild illness. Uh, so as of right now, we make changes to, um, you know, uh, healthcare workers who may have been in close contact, if they're double vaccinated, we can have them have them back under certain circumstances. And then of course, if we, if we get under a lot of strain oh, uh, yeah. because of transmission, we may have to look at things like that. As right now, we don't have a policy where um, uh, test positives come back and work, but uh, but we might have to take steps if necessary. One more, folks. Okay. Premier, why were you not at the press conference on Friday? And I was just wondering if you have any thoughts on the um, some comments on social media about your your presence over the weekend, given the Christmas card that had the Remembrance Day poppies. So um, you know. I, I know Minister Gordon was here at that uh, press conference on, on Friday, uh, along with Dr. Rusin. I have tremendous confidence in uh, both of those individuals, as well as I believe Dr. Reimer was there as well. Uh, and so certainly, um, you know, we work together as a team and I can't be everywhere at, uh, at every time. I know that uh, I was busy with many of you uh, last week in various uh, year-end interviews and, and that was, uh, um, you know, the time that I, I was spending there. But, uh, but you know, I'll continue to, uh, to do my part in all of this. Um, whether I'm in front of the camera or behind the scenes, I will continue to work uh, on behalf of Manitobans as the Premier of this province. Thanks, Lord. One of the primary changes in these amendments to the health orders is a reduction of capacity across the board, both indoor and outdoor, to 50% of capacity or 250 people, whichever is less. This applies to gatherings of vaccinated individuals. Gatherings that include one or more unvaccinated individuals are still under the previous restrictions. All other restrictions announced in the previous orders are still in place, including those that pertain to gatherings on private property, sporting events, and cultural and religious gatherings. The other big change is that on all licensed premises, liquor sales must end by 10 p.m. daily. This is of particular note as it comes ahead of the annual New Year's Eve celebrations. These orders are in place until January 11th. <laughs> 